Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you, Jesus, for the invitation. Thank you to the Association of Architects. Uh, for us, it's a great pleasure to be here today uh, to give this lecture. It's also amazing to see this uh, absolutely full hall. So we are quite surprised. Thank you. Uh, it's not usual, of course, uh, that four of us uh, came to a city for a lecture. It's an exception because we try to work always. So it's usual that one of us comes for a lecture. Uh, and when we do the lectures alone in general, we try to put, uh, to start with a kind of concepts and then develop these concepts uh, showing the, the projects. Today, it's going to be uh, a little bit different because we are going to show just 10 projects and I think that all the projects are going or we are trying to put all the concepts there. So let's see what it happens and we will start with the first one, Roger. Okay. Uh, the first project is this uh, student residence. It's a very interesting project for us because it's in front of the school that we we learn, we, we, we meet each other and we, we were studying there. This is a residence for architectural students. And, and this project starts with this uh, very strong condition. This is a public competition that we won, but uh, it must be, it was supposed to be built with a kind of a prefabricated system that you can see here. In fact, it's not like this. This is the, our approach to this material. This is something that they usually use mixing pieces and join it and in, a, in a probably a more flexible way using this kind of concrete elements. And obviously always finish it and recover it by plasters and, and all kind of materials, usually quite ugly. Uh, for us, the idea of this piece was a really good opportunity. We understand that this, as an individual piece, can fit perfectly with the idea of a student residence and this idea of a kind of uh, individual and very private room. So for us, that was our space special approach no connections, only one piece that maybe can be shared by two students, but only one piece, no divisions, and, as, and leave it as naked as possible as the original construction element. And, and also understanding this idea that this is not only in a space material, it's also a construction and materiality element. We we use it understanding that this is also like a construction element, like a brick or like a window or like a one element that can be, that, that all together can create other things. And, and for us, the, sorry, maybe this, no, the idea, the idea of this uh, aggregation of units was very interesting to create walls with these units, creating the relation between uh, individual spaces and common spaces. So it's very simple, but all the other architects and offices that were in the competition, they produce a, a big building. We decide to divide it and create a, a patio inside. And that's the, the main idea of the, the project. Mm, you have a, a very clear individual unit because the system gives this for free. So the, the idea is using the pieces together, create a, a common space that it's a kind of uh, claustro, uh, a, a place that it's helping in terms of microclimatic conditions and it's helping to the idea of comfort. Everything, all the common life, it's together, it's like a thousand, um, 1,000 square meters for free. And, and inside you have this, this individual piece that it's almost naked with this raw materiality that it was not supposed to be seen, it's supposed to be covered. 
but only only the the kitchen and the bathroom everything empty because we were we saw clearly that the the students of architect are perfectly able to use this space uh, probably in a proper way that we can design in a very fast process as a competition so we we decide to leave it absolutely empty and this is what happens a little bit but this is the beginning of the the life of the building right now it's a little bit much more beautiful and chaotic and this building has this common area that it's open and you have more the public area with the kitchen and all this and and the, the windows that are facing the outdoor, outdoor facade are protected by this double skin uh, vegetal sun protection that it's creating a very comfortable and I don't know adaptable condition that it's changing when the when the leaves are falling in winter the sun is coming and in summer that in Spain it's quite important we are really protected so from outside all this idea of the prefabrication system it's covered by the organic uh, plants and it's producing this fantastic expression hi okay this is a different story uh it's a story that begins uh, like 10 years ago the same day or not the same day but let's suppose that it was the same day that lemon brothers broke so, because this is the story of the crisis, and the crisis that, at least in Spain, especially in Catalonia, was clear in terms of economics, and the architecture became really deeply affected about that. So, this is a house. Uh, at the very beginning of the process, was a very common, uh, very common situation. Uh, a couple of young people that wants to wants to have a, a house they came from an apartment and it was a for them it looks at the beginning that it's gonna be a very regular and and common process obviously the end not was as common as was supposed at the beginning for them and this is in fact is thanks to the crisis that we were able to to do a, a specific research in terms of materia, in terms of, uh, in in terms, uh, it, I think it's an inflection in the process and the approach to the materia for the office because thanks to that specific economic situation, it was absolutely necessary to ask to the materials to do to perform its best to have real com comfort with a. Uh, not super low budget, but a possible budget. Uh, people don't ask for the, what they need. They, in general, they ask what they want to be. This is very common. I don't think it's only in, in, our, in, our, uh, in our context. In this case, the first... Uh, the first program, the first, not only the, the, not only the, what they wanted from us, but also our answer was like the first drawing. So it was a, it was a two floors house, for two house with a two house, two cars garage, a swimming pool, and so on. Uh, so because they were just a couple of people without a child and so on, but they. It's supposed that they're gonna become a regular or classical family. Uh, during the process, we really, uh, it was clear to us that it was uh, too big and, and it's gonna be too expensive, so we tried to change a little bit the house, making it simple, uh, easier and more simple in terms of program. But the, at the end, uh, when the project was complete and they went to the, to the bank, asking for the mortgage, uh, the answer from the bank was that no, it was just in that change of, of paradigm in terms of economics in Spain. So 
it was like a big crisis day, not only for all the country, but also for the office, because we were really uh, concerned about this project. So it was like, uh, it was a terrible day when they came to the office and they said to us that there was not project because there was not mortgage. So just in a very, very fast process, we asked them to, the, they, to we asked them for a couple of days to try to, to, to make the house as simple as possible, taking off everything that is not absolutely necessary. And that was happened with this house that uh, suddenly all the coatings, all the, all the people that are not absolutely necessary in a traditional construction process disappears from the process. The house is not triangular because we, are, we were concerned about uh, conceptuals in terms of composition. It's just triangular because it's the easiest way to deal with a triangular plot. And it's basically a, a structural wall system. Before this house, we did some other projects dealing with structural walls. But in this case, thanks to this situation, to make it simple and to make disappear a lot of elements of the process, we discovered that structural walls are not just a structural system, it's also a behavior system. It's, about, it's not only about the structures, it's also about cross-ventilation, uh, uh, special space, but not specialized spaces. So it, uh, well, it was a big chance for the office and I think that it was a nice experience to discover that the material, the, the very common um, materials that we use and products that we use for that kind of construction, when you use it in an uncoated uh, way, it gives you back a lot of, uh, of performs that are not only as a structural brick. So the house just is a house without, door, without doors, just pure uh, structural walls without no uh, uh, specific climate system. But it's a luxury. It's a, it has different kind of luxuries. It has high level of luxury in terms of natural light, in terms of, of uh, inertia, in terms of, of humidity because the brick with an, a special painting it deals very well with the control of the humidity, so it has a different concept of luxury. I think that, as Joseph said, uh, the, the triangular house and also I think that other two projects of this time, 10 years ago more or less, which were a uh, house and a school gym made on wood, uh, changes a little bit our approach to architecture. Uh, I think that our houses uh, looks always uh, not very expensive, but uh, that's not true. So in fact, we try to deal with the budget of the clients in the best way. And in this case, we, this is a house also for a, for a couple of our age, more or less, with three kids. Uh, it's not a, a cheap house. But uh, what we did in this case, also working with brick, which is a typical traditional uh, material in, in Barcelona and Catalonia, uh, we tried to make a kind of balance between uh, where we put the money. So what is uh, cheap and what is expensive? And, th and this kind of mixture makes uh, this uh, raw architecture uh, that looks like uh, really cheap, but it's not really. So, the, the characteristic of this house is uh, that it was for a client uh, that bought uh, this plot uh, to have a house with a garden surrounding the house. So this was a specific condition of the commission. They wanted a house in a garden uh, with a strong relation with this garden, but they need also a lot of walls because they were our collectors. So they wanted a house with walls, which is not uh, common. Um, this kind of contradiction uh, makes us think a lot about uh, about uh, what could be the solution. And I think that at the end it looks like very simple. I think that uh, in terms of, comp of composition, our projects are a little bit simple. But uh, at the end what we did is to sprinkle three boxes made on brick and all of them are crossed by these two kind of uh, galleries or porches 
that uh, connects the garden from the south to the north. So the idea is very simple. The division of the house is uh, the common part in the middle, which is the kitchen, and then the father's area in, in this part, and on the other side, uh, the place for the kids. Uh, I think that uh, I want to introduce a kind of spaces which are, uh, I'm not sure if uh, very specific in our work, but I think that we can divide a little bit uh, in a simple way uh, two kinds of spaces in our works. The first one are these uh, structural spaces like the triangular house or the three boxes, which in general are uh, spaces where the structure gives the composition of the space. And then another kind of space which works uh, very well in, in, in the Mediterranean, which are the, the spaces in between. A space that changes a little bit uh, the way of work in terms of uh, comfort during the summer and during the winter, and in general spaces which are not uh, uh, strongly programmed. So the, the use is not predicted in general. So in this case, the house have these uh, structural spaces in brick and there's two galleries in the middle. So it's very simple. Mm. You can see here in this section that the idea, the three boxes, you can also detect uh, that each height of uh, each space is uh, different. The kitchen is very high and etc. And also the facade express uh, the construction system. In fact, what we learned in these uh, projects were when the crisis shocked a lot or strong in, in, in our areas, but that we need to be very efficient. Very efficient means that when you decide to work with a system like the concrete shelters in the first project or the brick in the second in this house, you need to use it for as things as possible. So this is a kind of very simple strategy, but it has a strong repercussion in everything. So in the atmosphere of the spaces, in the composition of the plan, uh, in the structural system, etc., etc., etc. So this is a system, it's, it's very stupid. So it's uh, uh, two layers uh, of brick with the insulation in the middle. We work with this, uh, this uh, very simple lintel with uh, two or three layers of bricks with just uh, a steel framework in the middle and it works. And this is the house just when they started to live there with uh, two of the boxes and one of the gallery, as you can see, this almost caricaturesque idea is, is this connection between the two gardens. So when you are inside this porch, uh, it's like if you are in the middle of the garden. That's why we decided to leave the, the brick uh, without painting it. Another thing that uh, are quite common in some of our projects is the vegetation also uh, to work as some protection, like uh, for the residents and also for this building, but as an expression of the passing of time. So we are very, very involved in the design process, also in the construction process. So we finish the construction, we leave the house, of course, and after that, we really love to see what happens there. So uh, how the buildings are getting old. And in the case of vegetation, it's very expressive. So uh, the vegetation grows up very fast. So this is the house after two or three years and it changes a lot. So here you can see this strong connection with the two parts of the garden. As I said, uh, the walls are a chip system, the ceiling also, but in this case, the these big windows are very expensive, so it's this kind of balance that we used to manage during the project. We also spend a lot of time designing this. Uh, so in this house, we have white space and these two galleries. So we spend a lot of uh, a lot of hours thinking about the transition between uh, different types of space. In this case, uh, inside space, in a space in between, but also from inside to outside, and we discovered this kind of situations, which are, we discovered today in a Thilsing church that uses the same strategy, so painting white, uh, white inside and leaving the brick without painting outside. The distribution of the house is very simple, so at the ground floor we have always uh, the main hall, the main room of each box, and then another part with the services and 
etc. So each of these spaces are very different. This one is for the bedroom of the parents. This is the kitchen, which is very high, as I told you. There are just a few uh, windows or doors in each uh, room, but which is a traditional system in, in, in our area, so to reduce uh, the windows, but the light you have inside, it's enough, so it works fine. And finally, this is the, the studio of the kids. Okay, this is uh, another house. The, uh, in this case, the, the condition starts with a plot. This is a, a very large plot in, in the middle of a s historical center of a, a small city near Barcelona. And this, this long plot was a, for us a good opportunity for different approaches. In one hand, we have uh, the connection with two streets, two narrow streets. This, this was interesting in terms of creating a pedestrian entry and a car's garage entry. That was an advantage. But the most interesting approach for us was the opportunity of creating a very large house that cannot be built absolutely in terms of the urbanistic conditions. But here we, we start to experiment with uh, this idea that Xavi was explaining of the transition and uh, the idea of the in-between, but creating as much variety of uh, spaces and atmospheres as, as possible. So the transition from one street to the other, inside, crossing the house, uh, for us should be a kind of uh, experience of different qualities of a space and atmospheres. So here's the, the plant, the, the main plant, the, the ground plant and the section. And, and you, but it's not very clear the image, but you see that there are kind of a sequence of rooms that are connecting the more pedestrian entry and the garage. And, and these qualities are more clear in section because when you enter, you have a very, very high space that it's a kind of patio, but with a retractile roof. Then you have a quite high spaces for the kitchen, living room. Then, and this is clearly more domestic and indoors. This is in between, it's a bioclimatic space. Then you have a, a room that you can consider a room because it's surrounded by the same structural walls that we are used to, to use. But this is an outdoor room, it's a garden, and then you have a porch, so it's only a roofed space, then a smaller patio that has two highs, another indoor piece, and another big patio with a bioclimatic space where you can keep the car inside. So this variety of dimensions, natural lights, uh, finishing materials, bioclimatic or active systems, etc. It's producing this variety that it's what is interesting in this case, sorry. Another condition was that the, the original facade from the pedestrian was quite interesting because it has an historical pieces that uh, it was a patrimonial element that should be conserved, so, so we, we keep it. And that was also a very interesting thing, how we can connect this pre-existing element to something that is new and, and should not look as new as all the new buildings look like. And it's this idea that Xavi was introducing of the with the vegetation that we are, we are also trying to introduce with, with the, the idea of, of the constructing elements, how, how we can produce spaces that they are clearly contemporary, but they don't look like new. And this is something that it's very important for us. Uh, in one hand, sometimes we use some kind of archetypes. This is a patio and it's, easily connecting 
things that are uh, that, that we recognize from the history of architecture, but at the same time, the, the use of the brick, that later I will explain a little bit more, it's creating a kind of uh, textures that connecting with the natural light is helping us to understand that this is something that it's not what you, we usually understand as a new building. So the idea of uh, uh, structural walls, the idea of the understanding of the constructing process, everything is adding time to the building. It's like the building, when, when, you, st when you start to live there, it's like it was a little bit old. And this is the main entrance with the patio, you, this is the street. And this is a, the retractile space. You can come inside later, but it's a, a very important space because it's creating privacy from the, from the street. This is the typical uh, historical street with a lot of people walking. So uh, a very important thing in this house was we want to use the ground floor with the garden. So we don't want to, we want to be naked in the kitchen and nobody is looking at us. So it's, it's important. And this is what happened inside. You, you come inside the kitchen and you have this relation, again, the, the idea of the perforation of the structural walls, it's very important. And again, the, the simple idea of painting in white the indoor texture, it's creating something more domestic in front of something a little bit more wild or something that it's not exactly indoor. And this relation, it's, uh, and the natural light, it's producing in, in a place that you cannot have windows because then you lose the privacy, but the materiality of these bricks are creating a kind of organic landscape that it's, it's enough and you have the quality and you, you want to be there. It's a really comfortable space. The ceiling, it's the typical uh, structural uh, steel uh, framework that then you add concrete. But in this case, it have th the reason of that is that the, we, this is a, a radiant surface, the, the active climatic system, it's inside the concrete. And then with this surface, this is a cooling, refreshing ceiling and the structural mass, it's refreshing. So the, the reason of the geometry, we choose this structure, not only because we like it, uh, especially because we want more ex surface of exchange because it's a climatic surface. So then you, you start to cross the house and you go to the living room. And, and now we are in the, in the outdoor room, connecting with the, the living room. And, and here's where I want to explain which is the structural system. We, we, as, as other times, we decide to use bricks, but in this case, we, we, we look for a, for a specific way and, and we select different, we combine different kinds of bricks uh, and we organize them in order to, to be close to the structural behavior of the facade. So the, the more heaviest ones will be on the bottom and the lightest with more holes on the top. And the thinnest ones on the bottom because then you have more mortar and the mortar is heavier than the clay. So the idea is that it's a kind of a stratification from the heaviest to the lightest combining these horizontal elements that are the thinnest ones with the kind of post-tense beams that are uh, using the same bricks with uh, kind of screws and steel inside and it's producing a beam reusing bricks. So this is creating this uh, stratification of gravity so it's a kind of a static position, but 
uh, related to the real behavior of the building, the structural behavior. This is the porch, and then you go to the garage, that it's again like the, the patio that we enter, but a little bit bigger, with the retractile roof. And this is the, the other street. Well, this is another house, and all the houses that we're showing, not only the houses, but also the facilities, but uh, are, all of them are examples of something that we've been concerned from the very beginning of the office, which is this relation between structure and space. We loved from the beginning that uh, kind of vernacular example and also classical architecture that use that kind of identification. The structural walls are not only structural support, is also the, the material that gives a shape to the space. So uh, we, we, we're really interested in that kind of architecture. And so it's a kind of a structure that we've used a lot in our houses and in our not only houses. What we've been discover, discovering during the years is that uh, that structure are not only able to give geometry uh, to the space, it's also able to, to qualify the space in far more, in, in a lot of ways. For example, in terms of to qualify the air into the space thanks to the inertia, to qualify the air into the space thanks to the, how to deal with humidity. So from the solid materia, we've been uh, changing our point of, of uh, or point of research from from materia to air because what at the end we deal as human with the space is through the air is the air who give us the conditions of comfort is the air who give us the natural light so at the end structure is interesting as a system to qualify the air this is a very small house i don't know if it's a low budget house it's probably one of the low budget houses from the office, uh, maybe not the lowest, but it's the smallest. It's a really small house, because it's a, it's a house placed in the rest of a plot. It's not a complete plot. It's, a, it's the plot of the fathers-in-law of a friend of me. So they, they convinced the father-in-law to, to, to use the old garage at the end of the plot to make a very small house, small enough to don't disturb a lot the regular life life of the of the parents. So it's just 30 square meters uh, per floor. Is this house is nothing more than a support? Is a shell? Is a six spaces, but very special. I mean, it's it's very it's not uh, important to say which space is which program is in, in every space. What is important is how structure, again, gives special condition to space. Program is not as important as living. So, uh, but I, I show this house not only because of the, because the structure walls are like the previous houses. What is uh, interesting in this case is that in that idea to give conditions to the air, this house is, again, without uh, traditional heating system, it's just a small boil and nothing else. A lot of insulation, very, very, very good orientation, is absolutely oriented to the south. The west facade is completely closed, there's no holes. Uh, very wide insulation, far more uh, over the, the standards in Spain. And that south facade deals with the climate conditions through a gallery. That gallery is not only an, a natural engine that moves the, the, the hot air to the top, it's also, a, it's also the space for the non-programmed part of the house. So it's nothing more than this, it's a very, very small exercise, let's say, it's quite a research exercise. Uh, it's like this. And so the, the west facade is absolutely closed. The west orientation in Catalonia is awful because especially in summertime is the last hour of the day. So it's not only hot, it's also all the hot of the day in the air that comes into the house. So 
the house is absolutely close to the west and absolutely open to the south. And the house is so, so small that we use, we use that small garden between the two houses as, a, as the previous space to the, as a, as a small lobby to the, so that, that's the previous space, that's the small garden in between. And then you come into that gallery that works not only as an engine, not only as the way to, to put hot air into the house, but also as a non-programmed space and also a, a system to give the sense to the, to the parents that, the, that such a tall building is not coming over them. That's why we try to do that shape that makes the facade going behind and behind. That's the other facade. It's very, very close to the rest of the, of the orientations. And it's, it's very, very basic. That's, the, that's that. The luxury in terms of a space is just that two and a half meters uh, gallery that admits a lot of stuff, not only as a summer, uh, summer dining space, but also as a place for bikes. And well, it's, it's very simple, but at the same time gives a sense of luxury to the, the family. That's the parents' house at the bottom. The house is just that couple of spaces divided between, uh, by a staircase made of wood, uh, just insulation, and that uh, a very simple system that makes that when the air is in good conditions into the gallery, comes into the house, it, it's not necessary that the habitants open or close the windows because uh, in the vernacular examples, it's very, there's a lot of fabulous vernacular examples, but are always based in the wisdom of the users, because all houses always works well in terms of, of comfort, but thanks to the, to the wisdom of the users. Nowadays, that, this is very difficult, so we, it's not enough to use the traditional uh, strategies. It's also necessary to introduce how to deal with the strategies and the nowadays living, where it's very difficult to ask people to open and close uh, windows in a, in a wise way. Also, it's the, the inside pictures are really, really, it's a very simple house, but beautiful at the same time, and that works really well. Well, probably thanks to the crisis too, uh, another door opened to us uh, 10 years ago. And uh, in this competition for uh, the refurbishment of a, of a school in our city, uh, we have to work with, uh, with an existing building without value. So it was not a patrimonial building, but we need to, to work with it. Uh, in these cases, I think that we always try to work in the same way, so trying to be very strategic, trying to use the pre-existence uh, material in the best way, putting new materials to improve the behavior of the whole building, uh, trying to demolish all the strategic things that are not necessary. So it's not a technique of, uh, um, it's not a, a technique of uh, preserve everything as possible. Sometimes we are very, very hard with the, the old building. And this is the case. In fact, here we won the competition because we jump on the, we jump on the, the, the rules of the competition because it was just for, uh, for an inside refurbishment and we proposed to extend a little bit uh, the building. So it was risky, but we won. In general, we, we are risky. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, the, the, the refurbishments are different because uh, it's not easy to recognize a strong composition because the building is there, sometimes are quite chaotic, so it's not very interesting in terms of uh, composition, but uh, it's interesting in terms of strategy. In this case, uh, you can see the old building in, in black, so on the right side, and the extension on the left. Uh, what it was uh, uh, 
a contradiction, but the, the, the jury understood it, is that uh, we increased the building in the, in the south to win uh, surface in the north area. So, because the north area were full of uh, small classes, not big enough uh, for, the, for the children. So, uh, it was a surprise for them, but now the school works very, very well. Uh, in this uh, strategy of uh, increase the surface of the, of the right uh, classrooms, we had to move uh, the corridor, which is which uh, was here in the ground floor is in the same place, but in the first and the second, we move it to win this, uh, this area. So, as I told you, the plan is not very interesting. You can recognize the old corridor and the new one with the extension in, of these classrooms and, and the other part, in fact, uh, was uh, one of the, the most important parts of the commission of the competition was to improve the, the sun protection of the south facade, which was uh, an absolutely glass facade in the south in Barcelona, so it was uh, crazy to study there. Uh, in January, you can be at uh, 30 degrees, so it was crazy. This extension, uh, it has to be done just during one summer, so the system is not very interesting, but uh, it was a very fast system. And in, inside you can recognize, as I told you before, the old parts, uh, the new additions, uh, always mixed, uh, creating a kind of patchwork. Also the pipes of the new installation. Uh, you will see in, in next projects this kind of, uh, of strategy. So in general, our refurbishment look like uh, a patchwork with different materials. Here you can see uh, how we bricked up uh, the old corridor creating the new one. This uh, strategic intervention gives us an opportunity, it gives us a lot of problems, but also opportunities. So in general, we try to, so each problem can be an opportunity. So we don't like excuses. We try to use uh, problematic things to improve our projects. In this case, it's very simple. So, so we demolish uh, the, the wall for the, for the doors, uh, using this uh, typical system there. And in, after that, as we did in all of the other projects, we try to understand the, the material, we try to use it uh, as the generators of the space, the atmosphere. So here you can see a place where the, uh, our, our watch, a clock was located, and then during the work on site, we came another day and we discovered that a worker has cut it uh, with this triangular shape. Well, it's, this is still there. So, and this is the corridor with the, the addition of new materials, the combination with the old ones, creating this specific atmosphere where you can recognize uh, that it's of course a new building, but you can also recognize uh, that something related to the old spirit or its aim is still there. So. That's what makes also special the, the refurbishment. That, and inside you can recognize the corridor, the, the old ceiling with this traditional system, the first extension of 30 years ago. And as I told you, this is the, the new facade to protect in a very passive way, so very cheap and just, uh, from the sun. It was, uh, in fact, this was one of the starting points of this project. We, the, the facade is located just uh, behind the, the, goal, the goal keeper, so we have to make it as strong as possible. So <laughs> we put this, uh, this galvanized uh, sheets of steel with, uh, combined with uh, these uh, wood beams, and as you can see, it works very, very well. So, <laughs> Uh, and, uh, in terms of strategy, we also try to recover uh, old spaces. In this case, it was uh, the, the top of the building, which was a, a flat uh, roof uh, that we converted in this uh, playing area. Also, in this part, there was a, a stupid uh, roof 
made on glass to put the light to the staircase uh, that brings the people to the, to the sports hall. Made absolutely glass, so we, we keep, uh, we move the glass and we put a new concrete slab and now it's uh, another playing area. And at the end, uh, I think that related to this uh, love to the passing of time in our buildings, we also love very, very much uh, the people living there, in this case, the kids uh, moving in the, in the stairs. And here you can recognize the different, or the, the story of this building, which is not a very interesting building, with uh, the old uh, brick wall, another extension 20 years ago, and our additions trying to create this new building, but with a lot of references uh, to its past. Okay, another one. Uh, this is a, a research center for an environmental institute that they are researching about sustainability. And, and in this case, we, we understand from the beginning that we should work with this environmental condition. So the building is, is always a, a way of in creating an exchange with the, especially with the climatic conditions that we have outside and looking for a, a kind of architecture that it's able to transform the sustainability in something that is a, an architectural experience. How we can uh, design a building that the conception of the space and the feeling of the comfort and the atmosphere is connected with the idea of sustainability and you can understand it as a user. And obviously trying to reduce as much the mechanical systems. So how, how to do this was the, the specific challenge, sorry. And and this starts with uh, this idea of adaptability, how we can create something that is exchanging with conditions that are obviously changing during the day and during the year. And also understanding that this is a Spain, this is not your country. Maybe I think that this summer you have something similar to this. Maybe you can understand a little bit what is Spain. We, we have a obviously both problems we we, we need we need uh, it's very difficult to be absolutely passive in winter it's not easy but it's easier than in summer that it's a little bit more difficult in terms of how to deal and which architecture you have to design to this so in this building we, we decide to to catch as much sun radiation as it was possible, but at the same time, with this kind of a greenhouse effect that uh, in winter, obviously, it's close. It's a kind of skin, very light skin that it's close and it's catching all the sun radiation, creating a bioclimatic condition inside that it's like, I like to say, like a forever spring because it's something that it's 10 degrees better than outside. But at the same time, it should work in summer. So this, this facade can be open 100%, like now in the picture. And behind the polycarbonate system, there are kind of uh, micro perforate sheets of metals that are introducing sun protection to the windows inside. So this facade is, sometimes it's open, sometimes it's closed, sometimes it's open all the day, sometimes it's closed all the day and depending on this condition, the dynamics and the behavior of the building, it's organizing what Joseph was introducing, that it's the fluid matter. How, how we can be able to understand that the real comfort of a building, it's not the solid, only the solid material. We need to organize what's happening with the fluid matter, especially air, but also liquids and other things that are moving 
inside the building. And if we don't take care on these things and we um, ask an engineer to design it for us, then the architecture perception, it's far away from this concept. So the idea is that the building will introduce the behavior everywhere. And this is the typical section of an architect, but it's, in this case, it's more or less working like this. The, the double skin, it's open or closed, winter and summer, and when it's open in summer, the patios inside are creating a chimney effect with the roof that it's one extra floor over. Everything is open and this cross ventilation, it's helping to dissipate all this internal heat. At the same time, the building is exchanging with the underground, providing a fresher and more stabilized air. And this is creating this kind of uh, the half of the volume of the building, it's like a bioclimatic space, sometimes absolutely open to the outdoor, and it's the radical position of this building that sometimes it's absolutely open, except that inside there are specific spaces, like boxes made of wood that they obviously have, a good isolation, active systems if you need it, but sometimes usually are not needed. And the, the real behavior, what is happening, this is not a simulation, this is a, a, a monitorization, the, uh, the, what is happening really. It's this, that uh, we have the outdoor temperature, that it's the blue line during the year. The orange one, it's the in-between space, that it's the 50% uh, of the volume, and inside the boxes, it's happening this. It's totally in a quite comfortable rung. So the blue lines are explaining the adaptability of the skin. When the, there is this line, it's in summer and everything is open, and in winter, it's closed. So here it's combining the outdoor skin and the doors of the offices that are opening automatically. So when the building has this kind of smart system introducing uh, an idea of comfort, an idea of behavior, and these windows are opening and closing and are producing this very simple idea. It's closed, uh, it's open in summer, it's closed in winter and in between sometimes it's open during one hour or depending but very simple and this is what I was trying to explain this has a this is not a only an energetic approach this is an architectural and a space approach and the idea is um, how these conditions can be reflect on the perception of the user and the idea is that uh, we have uh, four patios that are providing the cross ventilation and then the boxes that can be removed during the, the life of the building. But they are always leaving a kind of empty spaces, places that you can stop for a moment and have a, a coffee or something like this for a break. And these spaces are the, where you can really understand this idea of sustainability. Because the building finally works like that. It's winter and summer. The, in summer, everything is open, and then you have a, very, a, lo a lot of surface to dissipate, and this is a very compact building for winter. So it's very simple, but it works like this. So finally, you have an a more warm spaces, a very bioclimatic conditions. And this is the experience. You have very good quality of light from the patios with the, the roof that it's uh, very transparent. And these are spaces that are not the static spaces. People is working inside the boxes, but here you can have a meeting, you can have a, a break and it's mostly all the year, it's a, a very, very comfortable area. 
But at the same time, this is absolutely open. Sometimes it's windy, so I have seen butterflies crossing. It's really radical in terms that you feel like you are outside. You are not inside the building. And this is the, the strong perception and you understand, you understand a little bit what is sustainability. It's these qualities, and then you, if, it's, if this is not enough, you go inside, but you have these both qualities. And this working spaces, very raw again, are um, protected by the isolation, but also with this structural element, that it's the static element, it's like an infrastructure, it's the structure, horizontal structure, that it's a long-term element, that in our case, we, we try to do it to introduce as many things inside, like uh, something that you can block there. And inside this, the structure, it's full of tubes organizing all the mechanical systems, the recovery air systems, the radiant systems connected to the geothermal. So this concrete element, it's at the same temperature as the geothermal conditions, then in uh, this area it's like 17 degrees, nearly for free. So it's helping a lot in summer and also quite a lot in winter, but at the same time, all the tubes are inside and exchanging with the concrete, so it's a kind of a big constructive element that is a heat exchanger, not a machine that it's making a heat exchanger, it's the building that it's a heat exchanger, and it's this constructing process, all the structure full of elements, and finally this idea of the building and the environment exchanging. Well, I hope it's not getting really boring. I hope that especially for our partner, David, who is seated in the first line and he knows all that stuff as well as we do, so I hope he's not getting uh, slept. Uh, this is a building, this is a facility that we finished uh, one year ago, one year and a half. It's in the center of Barcelona. This is a, an elderly people's school and also school for people who want to learn Catalan and so on. And uh, I like to explain that building uh, as an example of how we introduce time in our projectual process. Not time in a poetic way, but time as a parameter, time as a, an objective parameter. Uh, the strategy, the general strategy in terms of architecture is quite simple to understand. This is a very bizarre plot, triangular shape again. That's why I explained that, because I always explain the triangular shapes in the office. <laughs> it's a joke, yeah. Uh, so it's that, uh, it's not the original plot, this is a part of a big factory, a craft glass factory. This is the, the rest of that uh, huge factory, not only the plot but also a part of the facade, of the, this is a heritage facade, is an existing facade that is uh, protected by the city council, so the competition conditions included that the facade has to rest in the, in the place, okay? So the strategy was basically to complete the plot, to complete the triangle, the triangle as, an, as a urban, uh, as a urban uh, answer to the city. From that point, we began to deal with uh, that original facade and we understood that as is the south facade, so it's the logical uh, front to get natural light for the classrooms, it was important that uh, to understand how well or how bad uh, the original halls work with the natural light. So we decided the, the most important strategy in this building, which is to do two steps behind and to, to produce a patio, a courtyard, in between the original facade and the new program. That courtyard works as a, 
as a tool to, to make a balance between the natural light from the original holes and also from the ceiling. From that strategy, we discovered that it was that courtyard could become a, an atrium and, um, and introduce behavior strategies in the building, not only in terms of natural light, but also as a, as a tool, as a natural tool to give conditions to the natural air before that air come into the classrooms. Not only in winter as a, as a greenhouse effect, but also in summer as a shadow space that could also give a cool sense to the, to the fresh air before it comes into the classrooms. That, this is more or less the resume of the architectural strategies, but when I was talking about time, what I meant is that uh, time in, in, that, in that objective approach uh, for us means, first of all, time as use. Uh, if there's no time, the use of the architectural object is not possible. Then architecture becomes just a sculpture. So this is about architecture, so the time in terms of use is absolutely necessary. Not in terms of program, which is less important than, than the idea of how we use the architectural uh, presence. In this case, uh, it could sound exciting, but in this case, it's, it's very boring because our strategy in terms of use was that as this is a public facility, what it, what it wasn't important is to take too much attention to the, to the programs, conditions of the users. Because in a public facility, the, the users are going to be there for five years, maybe 10 years. But in 20 years, the, the users, the, the real program will change. So we have to, we have to propose to the, to the citizens public facilities that are able to assume different programs. That's why we did that uh, simple system of spaces, very special again in terms of light, in terms of uh, natural fresh air conditions, in terms of, of a space and material, but very repetitive, very simple, very flexible in terms of, of specialization. These spaces are not highly specialized, just a few, just enough to give classes, but also can become administrative offices and so on. Uh, the, other, the second strategy in terms of use was to convince that different users uh, to share uh, certain spaces. This could be look logical if you see that bizarre uh, shape, but from the point of view of the three users that were involved with the use of the building was absolutely clear that they need three different doors, three different staircases, three different bar bathrooms, and so on and so on. So it was a large process to convince them to deal together and to use the, the building together. Uh, so that is that kind of spaces that, especially the classroom, where it's clear that relation between the, that uh, flexible space in terms of program, but very special in terms of, is really different to something else. So, Time is also obviously the idea of memory. In this case, that we have to deal with that existing facade is about how you deal with the heritage, how you deal with the existing material. In our case, it's very simple to explain. Of course, that we are concerned about the cultural uh, concepts that you can understand when you see that kind of rest. But what is really important for us is to understand the real capacities of the heritage in terms of material. How strong is this wall to support now uh, new heaviness over it? How wide is this wall to give us uh, inertia to, to, to give conditions to the air? And in this case also not, not is working as a structural wall. So for us, it was clear that we have to, not only to complete the triangle, but use, again, the way that the heritage works in the past as a new key to understand how the new building gonna work. Of course, that is also about uh, composition to, to deal with the heritage, to give a sense and a dialogue. But for us, it's far more important to show how the original wall works, not to, not to recover 
the sense of a complete facade, but to show that it's working as a compression system. Uh, and as a compressive system, is able to support what is happening uh, upstairs. It's the same approach to the new materia, to show how it's working, to show how it's working in terms of compression, smallest pieces at the bottom, lighter pieces at the, at the upstairs. Uh, it's the direction of the brick that is explaining if the is a double layer brick uh, wall or if it's a only one layer wall and so on. To understand the capacities of the material is the important part. It doesn't matter if it's a, an existing material or is a new material. And the third, uh, the third sense of the time concept is time as behavior. Without time, it's not possible to introduce to, into the architecture the idea of behavior, of, performance, or perf of performance of the building. We design the performance of the building. How that building is, is giving conditions to the, to the inside comfort. In this case, uh, is, at the end, is, is really we project the use of the building. We design conditions, but the only tool that we really have, the architects, is to decide geometry and materials. But we try to ask to that simple decision as much as performance as possible. So the structure is not only working as a structure to support the activity of people. It's also uh, giving geometry, geometrical conditions to the, to the design of the installations. It's giving uh, inertia. It's giving shape. It's giving the, the movement of the air. The air is moving through that building because the structure has a specific shape and a specific geometry. On the other part, the other way to decide, uh, uh, you have the structure and you have the envelope that protects the use of the building in front of the climate. In this case, the envelope is, of course, is that part that protects you from the rain by geometry, by materia, but in this case, is also a natural engine that moves that air. The structure is giving conditions to the air, the, the roof is giving energy to the air. To all that movement is based in a natural engine, which is that sun chimneys, which are not only the, the rainproof of the, of the roof, but is also the natural engine based on the sun chimney effect, in the just chimney effect, and also in the venturi effect. That's the, the process that we did. Uh, is, uh, of course, that, that I, we really assume as a responsible of the architecture to propose, to deal with that concepts, very scientific concepts, but you also need the complicity of the engineers that accepts that that kind of behavior of the building can be solved through architectural tools, but you need really scientific tools to check that it's gonna work. Because this is a public facility, we have to check we have to assure that 15,000 uh, volume meters are going to be moved per hour to get the comfort conditions into this, this case. This is the checking process. This is the south uh, courtyard and this is the north courtyard. Both are working in the same way. One is dealing with the old facade, the other is just dealing in terms of material and geometry, but are doing the same, which is to get to give conditions to the air previously to come into the inside spaces. Okay, now, now you know that this is not a triangular project because I'm explaining it. Uh, good news because the lecture is almost done, just this project and another last house. Uh, this is uh, another refurbishment which uh, where we have to deal with this old building of a uh, hundred years ago, more or less. The building was not very interesting. Uh, the facade uh, has heritage value, so we have to, to keep it. And then the building just have uh, uh, um, the cooperative shop, the old cooperative shop. And in the first floor, just uh, a multi-purpose room for activities of the, the cooperativists. And that's all. The other parts of the building are just uh, uh, 
places to work and, and nothing special in terms of space. So after uh, 90 years ago, after 19 years, uh, we deal with this competition that we won. The building, it's, it's not a, a very interesting shape. It has three parts. The first one with the main rooms are connected with these uh, two streets, the main one and a secondary one. The second part uh, was just a place for the leaves and the staircase and so on. And the third part, which is the only part with the south facade, uh, it's almost new. So our strategy, uh, the building was for the neighbors, so with a lot of different types of rooms to have uh, different events and activities. So our strategy was very simple, was to create this kind of uh, inner street uh, to connect the main street to all the parts of the building. So the, the more, the, or the old ones and the new ones in a very easy way. So this street was an opportunity to create good conditions in terms of light and air, etc. In, uh, in these parts. So, and also a very easy way for the users to understand how the building works. So this, was a, this is a drawing of the competition. Here you can perhaps recognize this kind of a scaffolding uh, inspired in Lina Bobardi's uh, theater in Sao Paulo. Uh, these are the two main rooms. Uh, this is the service part and uh, the new part of the south. This is the section of the, 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 the first area of the project. Here you can recognize the, the, old, the former shop here with the old structure, this whole uh, ceiling. And here you can recognize too the old facade and uh, this old truss. And that's what we kept. This is, uh, this is appears thanks to a big demolition that we did. And then we added, as I said in another project, the new parts that can transform the old ones. So in this case, uh, we put this, uh, this scaffolding to connect all the different parts of the building. We put also a very complex, uh, not, well, system, but also uh, a very difficult process to create this new uh, roof where the south uh, part is always made of uh, polycarbonate or glass and the north one is just uh, still uh, with insulation and it's all. As uh, in the research center that Roger explained it before, uh, there are a lot of uh, parts of the building that are not uh, climatized, just uh, bioclimatized using the sun, using the, using the, the natural ventilation with uh, this kind of passive systems, like this uh, window on the top that moves the air during the summer from the ground floor to the top, like a very simple solar chimney. And this is the third part of the building, the one that has uh, uh, the south facade, which is almost new. And you, you can recognize a new structure made on concrete with walls also made uh, on brick. And one more time, you can easily recognize the old parts and the new ones mixed to create a new building, but uh, with uh, a long history in its past. So this is uh, the more specific thing that we can do with an old building to transform it, but trying to keep something from its uh, history. And also one more time, you can recognize, I'm not going to explain, this kind of passive systems connected to a central uh, PC, in fact, that uh, get open depending on the climate conditions outside and also inside. This is the, the facade, we just clean it and that's all. This is the old, the former shop. We change the level of the ground floor in this part because we need uh, all the ground floor in the same level. So one more time, the mixture of uh, old parts, new ones, creating a very special space. And this is the, this new street, this inner street where uh, a strong scars and, and uh, of the past are living in this, with these new elements, like this uh, kind of scaffolding, this uh, polycarbonate roof. Uh, one more time here, the conditions are 
uh, strongly similar to the outside. So almost all the the spaces in this uh, or the classrooms in this building are inner parts, but all of them connected to this uh, this space, this huge hall. And again, recognize this uh, as these little moments that reminds us the, the long story of this building. And this is the, the main hall facing on the other side, on the other facade to the, to the atrium. And the atrium on the top. One more time trying to use the old uh, with these new parts uh, working in the original way. So it's a kind of lot bearing wall with this kind of uh, columns inside. In the last uh, part of the building, uh, everything is almost new, but you can recognize in, with different intensity uh, this kind of uh, uh, apparitions of the old parts. So, and this is one of the new classrooms where everything is new, but you are facing the atrium connected with the old party wall. So everything you feel, every time you feel that you are in an almost all new building. And, and this is the last project and it's the last one that we have finished in the office. It's a house in Ullastret. Ullastret is a very small village, like a, like a very historical and special and protected village with a very narrow streets with all the houses built it with a kind of wall stones and uh, if you want to build there, you have to to take care of what you are building because it's protected, and you have to to check it with a specialist, and it's quite difficult. And and obviously, this project is about the idea of the stone wall, and this image that you see here, it's it's not as in the project before that it was uh, something related to an existing element. In fact, it's related absolutely to an existing element, but this is a new wall. What you see here, it's a new stone wall. Because this, this project has a very strange condition that the plot was an empty plot and it was surrounded with all this large existing stone wall, very beautiful, but for uh, strange urbanistic reasons, the, the, the city won't uh, want to change the dimension of the street and this, this existing wall that it was closing the plot, between the plot and the, the street, it, it should be demolished uh, in order to, to have a, a wider street. Very stupid because the characteristic of the village is that then the streets are really narrow. But this is the urbanistic condition and we cannot stop this. So the decision was to create a new wall that it, it was able to connect again with all this existing urban condition that it's protected and it's protected because it's really beautiful. But how can we do it in a contemporary way? Because the most of the transformations that are doing right now, just they are contemporary constructions with some stones put it in the facade, but not really, it's like a fake. We wanted to do something that it has connection with the real interest of what is a stone of, a wall of, made of stones. And this is a little bit the problem, that the plot was that and the original uh, wall was there. So you, we need to reduce the plot from here and there. And the result was something like this. This is a house that as we wanted to 
produce a wool. The house it's like a wool, so it's very large because we want to close all the garden. Instead of being inside in the middle of the garden, that could be, it was possible, but we decided to put it on the edge, on the limits, creating the biggest garden as possible with good uh, views and solar radiation, but at the same time, and the most important, in order to rebuild the idea of the existing wall. So we, we took the original stones from the, the original wall and we rebuilt it in, in another kind of contemporary construction. But the idea of the, um, the wall was transforming all the decisions. For example, all the, the walls are not layering elements, they are monolithic walls. So, because when you saw this kind of old fashioned stone wall, they are monolithic, they are not layering, they are monolithic. So we want to go to the same condition. So that means that this wall, in order to to have the legal conditions uh, nowadays, so it, it must be, uh, it must have some quality in terms of isolation. So you'll see later how we mixed different materials in order to create a monolithic wall, but it's enough, uh, it's, it, it has working enough well in terms of isolation. But at the same time, this idea of the wall is and the idea of the large house is producing this typology very strange. We have a, 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 like the kitchen and the living area, and then you across a porch, then you have a kind of um, rooms that are not exactly rooms. They are like very open to the garden, like a gallery where you can create a corridor. But, in, but, but close to the wall, there is a kind of a, uh, idea of a dip of the, of the wall, like a cave, where you have the more intimate and small elements, like the bathrooms and the bedrooms, put it exactly inside the, the wall. So it's creating a quite radical typology. If you want to go to the bedroom, you have to across the bedrooms of your family, or you go from, um, from outside, that it's a, it's a possibility in our climatic conditions. And finally, the idea of the wall, it's uh, producing quite a lot of radical conditions, but it was perfectly accepted by the clients and it's, it's working really well. And this is the, the technique of the new well, it's reusing the, the original stones, but mix it with a kind of concrete, like a mortar, that it has a recycled glass elements inside that works as isolation. Sometimes it is like 40 or 50 centimeters, sometimes it's 80 or one meter, depending on the position of the, the house. And Depending on how many isolation we want, we put more stones or less, apart from the outdoor facade that we put always stones in order to create this contextual facade. But inside, this is going to be like a concrete element. And from outside, we're going to demolish the surface and then the stones came in the in the surface and you can see the stones. And this is the, the image. So everything was like that, like a concrete wall, but we destroyed the surface and we found the existing stones inside. So next to the windows, you have still the texture of the inside, but the rest of the facade, it's destroyed and it's similar to the existing constructions because this, this is not cement, this is lim, like the original constructions in, the, in this village. It's lim, it's not concrete, it's more white or it's uh, different, it's not so gray, like in concrete. And it's also mixed with earth from the, from the soil. So it's a kind of uh, 
tapial construction. And from inside, you have the garden and everything is really open. All the windows can be open 100%. This is the living area. Here you see the texture that it's not, you don't have a stone inside, it's just limb, like a concrete built with layers. You, you are really open, it's like living in a porch. And this idea of the corridor, the gallery, and the kind of caves where you have the, the bathrooms, the, the beds for the kids, and this is the gallery where you are crossing the, the bedrooms. This is our office, this is me, uh, Chavi, George, David, having lunch here. It's really, it's really a very comfortable house. It's, it's super. It's uh, really, uh, you feel really like a permanent holiday there. It's, uh, and this is the kids' room that can, it's designed also to have guests, so one family can sleep, the fathers and the kids, or can sleep other combinations, so it's a kind of uh, house that is designed to, to be used in a very different ways. This is the main bedroom. And from outside you have again this texture, and this geometry that it's the, the new urban direction of these curved streets. And this is the contextual condition. The, the existing stones that are a little bit more dark because they go, this building is going to be darker by the time because the dirty and everything. And I think it's working very well in terms of contextual. Thank you.